you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz, and I'm here today to review Alita Battle Angel, starring Rosa Salazar, Christoph Waltz, Jennifer Connelly, Jackie Earl Haley, and Mahershala Ali, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez is a very interesting director. On the one hand, he shot into fame with doing a very, very, very low-budget action film that actually, if you have not seen El Mariachi, I would say I would definitely check it out, to then making very violent, stylized, gory films, such as From Dusk Till Dawn, Machete, Desperado, part of the El Mariachi series. But then he also decided as well, I'm going to make kids movies. So he did the Spy Kids movies. He did uh, also, I think the, it was called The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, which I heard was awful, but I, I will get past that. So when I realized that he is directing this movie, I was like, oh, this will be interesting. And honestly, I was kind of expecting more along the lines of a, not like a Sin City, but like a Desperado button sci-fi. I guess. And I was kind of surprised when I was watching. So why don't we get into it? Let's get into the review of Alita Battle Angel, directed by Robert Rodriguez. But before that, let's get into the plot. The film is set around the 26th century, where an abandoned cyborg is found by Dr. Dyson Ido, played by Christoph Waltz. When he realizes that the cyborg can actually be fixed back up, he puts the cyborg back together. She, he names the cyborg Alita, who is played by Rosa Salazar. And as Alita starts to navigate her new life in Iron City, he tries to piece back her memories while Ido is trying to shield her from that past that she is unaware that she had. All right, and that is the plot for Alita Battle Angel. So let's get to my three points. And my first point is a mix of young adult drama and dystopian sci-fi work. Though it's pretty trite. Again, I was kind of surprised that this was a young adult movie. I, I recognized it almost right away as the film was going on. Because I was thinking Robert Rodriguez. It's not like really a kid's film. So I'm guessing it's going to be more of his violent movies. In this, this is actually more of a young adult film. And what I mean by young adult film, or young adult drama, I should say, it goes through the very standard tropes of that genre. It's, it's about a young person who is between the age of 10 and 15. Uh, they're very unsure of themselves. They're shy uh, or they're not popular, and then someone takes them under their wing that is also either very attractive or very handsome. They fall in love, they grow attached to each other, and they go through drama and that sort. All that is in there. And it's pretty obvious as it's going on. But what's also obvious is the dystopian sci-fi in the movie. It's set in the future. There's one place up above that is for the rich and the poor live down in the dumps. Basically, it's got a bunch of people who have augmented parts. There are people who are cyborgs. It's violent. It, it goes through the exact same thing as well as most dystopian sci-fis as well. But what I will say is that it works in this movie. And I think it works mainly because the actors who are playing the lead characters are really good. I mean, this is a really good cast. You have Christoph Waltz, you have Jennifer Connelly, you have Mahershala Ali, Jackie Earl Haley. The actress who plays Alita, I think, pulls her off very well. She gets the right tone of not only innocent and sweet and very lovable, but when she has to be deadly and she has to be violent, she pulls it off too. It doesn't seem odd seeing both sides of Alita, and I think the actress pulls it off very well. Even though I think it's not original in the slightest, it really is not, I think it works well. And my second point, the look of a darker Spy Kids works well. So what do I mean by this? Spy Kids had a very interesting look to it. What I liked about Spy Kids is that it didn't try to hide it. And I think Alita Battle Angel kind of does that as, as well in this movie. You can tell that most of the film is in green screen. And that's perfectly fine because I think it kind of works with the vibe of the film. I don't think they try to hide that in any way. Overall, I think the look fits well with the film that they're trying to make. And my third point, definitely needed a lot more world building depth. One of the things about some sci-fi films I just do not like, they centered the film in one area and it seems like there's nothing outside of it. A really good sci-fi story works when they paint a picture about an entire world and that it is wide reaching to a certain extent. Yeah, you're, you're gonna center in one area, but that there is infinite possibilities in other areas throughout the entire story. 
And I don't get that with this movie. And I think it's also because of the setting, because you have only the town, which is Iron City, and then you have the upper floating town, and they're talked about back and forth, and they, they interact in a way with each other that is combative, but they don't go outside of it. So it just feels like the only thing that's in this world is this city and that city. And on top of that, because it's filled with tropes, there is really not a lot of depth with all the other characters. You have the standard roughneck characters, the standard evil characters, standard good characters. They're all standard in this movie. But is it a really bad thing? No, it's just something that I wish there was more of as I was watching it. And here are the footnotes for Alita Battle Angel. My first footnote, they nailed the look of Alita. I have to say this right off the bat, and this is part of the first point, but I wanted to say this in the footnotes. The way that they created Alita with her anime eyes and the way she looks, I think they really nailed it. She's cute, but she's not creepy. She has the look of an innocent person, but you also believe when she gets violent, she's very capable. They nailed this. And my second footnote I'm conflicted of whether I want to see a continuation of the story. When the film ended, I thought it was good, so you know I'm recommending it. Do I want to see a sequel to the story? I honestly don't think so. I think the story is fine, but it, it was just a little too tropey for my taste. It just went through those guidelines for each type of story and just check boxes. That's what made it really uninteresting at certain points of the film. But it's the actors who I think rose the story up to something a little bit better. Even though I did like it, I think I have had my fill of Alita Battle Angel. But then again, I had my fill of the Harry Potter series after Chamber of Secrets. And I thought, this isn't going to get any better. I might as well stop. And then Prisoner of Azkaban came out and blew me the hell away. Maybe it's able to blow me away with more world building and more that can make it interesting. But it would really have to do a really good job in the second movie to make me interested in continuing the story. So yeah, that's kind of my thought on that. So overall, I am going to recommend Alita Battle Angel. I think uh, despite its tropey nature and that it's really not that creative of a film when it comes to its characters and its story, I think it's fun. I think the action is pretty good in the movie. I really think the actors punched above their weight in this story. They had a story that was meh, it's okay, but their performances and their charm, I think, actually rose it up to another level that makes it recommendable. I like Christoph Waltz in this movie. I really like Rosa Salazar in this movie as well. I think she did a great job as Alita. Again, I recommend this film, but honestly, I don't think I want to see a sequel of this. If they decide that they're not going to do a sequel, I think I'm okay with that. I but if they do, and it turns out to be really good, I'll give it a shot. So overall, I recommend Alita Battle Angel. Uh, check it out wherever you can stream it. It's good. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. Okay, so for Tuesday, I'll be reviewing Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox. Thursday is the Double Seven Debriefings with Zero, and we're going to be reviewing Die Another Day. And on Saturday, I'm going to watch another DC animated film. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not terribly interested in it, but I really don't know the character very well, except for the Keanu Reeves movie, which I don't even remember much about. I don't even know if I've seen that movie, now that I come to think of it. But I'm going to be watching Constantine's City of Demons. Uh, again, I'm going to be checking out more DC animated films. I've liked a bunch of them in the past, so I am going to give them another shot. Tune in Tuesday while we're reviewing Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox. Thursday, to Double Seven Debriefings with Die Another Day. And Saturday, Constantine, City of Demons. I am the Wiz, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.